thank you very much. Uh, thanks to John Kess for inviting me, um, uh, Bijan Rohani, the IHF, and the, of course the funders who fund this uh, conference. Uh, my talk today is going to be really an overview of what's happening in Libya. It's really probably a rush sort of uh, uh, talk, but it will give you an overview idea of what's, uh, what's actually going in. It's different from the other parts of North Africa, different from Egypt, different from uh, Tunisia, and obviously quite different from the Middle East. <coughs> Here you see this, the Libyan cartoon describes the situation in Libya since 2011 is chaotic. The natural heritage is being destroyed here. There's no security. This government is very weak. The uh, cultural heritage property was destroyed as well. And of course, this is the situation in Libya at the moment. Libya now in the news is divided countries, has two governments, useless two governments. None of them was uh, interested in preserving and protecting heritage. Uh, they're all competing on the oil. So, and today is supposed to be the day when Libya had the new government, which we call the government of national accord, and the conference or the signing has been postponed for the next two days. Libya yesterday was, uh, uh, the ICOM produced a red list for Libyan cultural heritage yesterday in Paris. Uh, Libya was in the news that the Islamic State seized uh, UNESCO heritage site in Libya. Today, uh, yesterday as well in the news, but uh, this is really the state of affairs in Libya. Uh, ISIS is not in control of any Libyan sites apart from CERT. CERT is an Islamic site, but they are in control of it, and we have no news whatsoever about that. But Lettis Magna, Sabrata, I checked myself last night with the controllers of both sites, and none of them say that has any damage or any relation to ISIS. There is ISIS group near Sabrata, which they've been negotiated to leave the area, but there's no damage whatsoever from ISIS at the moment. <clears throat> if you don't know Libya, Libya is a huge country. It's uh, a, little, a little continent. It's the third biggest country in Africa. It has a low density of populations. Only five and a half people live in Libya. So the human resources are quite low. Looking after this huge area and huge heritage is a mammoth task. And Libya is not capable of looking after it. So it needs a lot of help from the international community, from all the foreign missions in Libya, and anybody could lend a hand would be, would be grateful for that. Libya has five sites of uh, World Heritage Sites, and it has uh, Sabrata, Leptis, Magna, Cyrene, Gadamus, and uh, Akakus. If you look at Libya closely, it has three bands of culture. The desert culture, which is in the south here, it ha was one most, it's a huge area, has most fantastic cultural heritage of the prehistoric type. It has a few African kingdoms, the Tuareg, the Tabu. It has the Jaramantese culture. It's a huge, and it's not an easy place to look after. It is open and exposed. And of course, there's a Chad, there's an Asia, there's Algeria, there's the Sudan, all of these can, things have an eye on this area. And then have the middle band, which is the pre-desert area, is the interface between the north and the south of Libya. It's mainly really inhabited by the old Libyan tribes. Is, uh, they live in the wadis, and most of the time they uh, quite, uh, the people who know and to to control the trade between north and south. During the Roman periods, it has a hybrid architecture, as you could see it here, and it became the Lemais of the late Roman Empire. And then we have the, the Mediterranean culture. It's about 2,000 kilometers 
of the southern Mediterranean uh, shores. It has the uh, uh, Cyrenaica, which is a Greek colony, and it has one of the most beautiful sites, Cyrene, number three there. And on the left side, it, or the west, it has the Trebritannian uh, area, which uh, comes up to Tunisia. It has one, two, three major sites, uh, which are known as Sabrata, Leptis Magna, and so on and so forth. And the whole coastal area are littered with uh, Roman uh, uh, villas. And a lot of them were well-preserved and of the highest quality. So, really, it's a huge heritage. For one country with low human resources, it's very difficult to look after. In 2011, Libya became uh, uh, a revolution place, where the second revolution, the Arab um, uh, Spring, took place. And it became a chaotic place of war and destruction. And of course, during that period, uh, the uh, uh, NATO decided to uh, bomb Libya or bomb the uh, the Gaddafi troops to protect the civilians around. And in that time, we thought that we're going to send a mission for, to assess the situation during this period. So three of us, Yunus Keller, Karl Habsburg, myself, we decided to go to Libya to check the situation. We have two trips, uh, Tripolitania, this is before the fall of Gaddafi, and we have another trip to West East Libya, Cyrenaica. And before that, I was in Kings and I was walk, uh, uh, working on a, a map of Libya, a digital map of Libya, using data mining system to get all the coordinates on everything labeled in the web, ruins, archaeology, archaeological sites, and so on and so forth. So we have a, quite a huge uh, database of coordinates, which became handy later in the, uh, to become one of the first uh, non-strike lists will be sent to uh, NATO countries. During our visit to Libya with the Blue Shield, we thought we have to check the sites. We actually send the information about to uh, NATO. And one of those sites which are my eye on, because I send the coordination myself, is called Ras al Margheb. It's about 15 kilometers away from Leptis Magna, and it was uh, <coughs> a fort used by the Italian and then by Gaddafi to put uh, mobile uh, <coughs> radar uh, apparatus. So we went there and we checked it, and we are astonished to see that NATO hit every mobile uh, radar with a kind of ordinance which didn't destroy the site but just uh, uh, made the, uh, the, the radar unoperative. It is a fantastic site. You could see here uh, the Roman arch in the middle hasn't moved by all this bomb. It's a huge site, uh, bombed really thoroughly, and this is one of the evidence we have that actually NATO might have used the non-strike list we sent. Even though I went to a few uh, courses with NATO to check whether actually they have used the, but it's very difficult to get information because it's all secret. This is the summary of the uh, destruction or the threats happening in Libya. Too. It's not really an extensive, uh, it's, it is a minimal uh, from a path from the Benghazi Museum, which, uh, uh, which uh, looted. Anyway, so this is the threats Libya uh, uh, faced. It's different from many other places. Really, the first threat, Libya, it's already underfunded. There's no really enough funding from the governments during Gaddafi period or after that to help the institution of the uh, Department of Antiquity to protect uh, and record all this cultural site. Of course, the extremist is another uh, threat, mainly the Salafist. 
which have the Wahhabis uh, ideology and mainly interested in the uh, Islamic um, Sufist uh, shrines. Then traffic, traffic, trafficking is really quite minimal, but we don't really have enough evidence that traffic, trafficking is flourished. But I think later from the things with serfs in the market is quite extensive. But the main threat is urban encroachment. It, there's no security, there's no law enforcement, there's no planning being enforced. So, and there's uh, the country awash with weapons. So it's really the right environment for land grabs and, and uh, urban encroachment. And then, and then of course the vandalism. A lot of it due to ignorance and not aware of the importance of cultural heritage and its link to the identity of the Libyans. And then, of course, the lack of awareness. Libya, not aware of its heritage. During the Gaddafi period, he tried to link their identity with his theory. And later, uh, Libyans tried very hard to get in touch with their heritage. And, and, and it was very difficult to do that. So a lot of uh, civil organization now trying to fill that vacuum. And this is a map of the of the destruction of Libyan uh, heritage, mainly really uh, uh, shrines of uh, uh, Sufis. Of course, this is a really upsetting time, and, uh, and major shrine um, <coughs> monuments being destroyed, and uh, some of them uh, madrasas, some of them uh, Islamic University, which happened to have a shrine in the middle, and it's quite. Uh, uh, a lot of them been uh, bulldozed, and some used explosive, and some even used uh, hammers, as you could see. There. And of course, there, there's other sh there's other monuments which link to to the Ottoman period as being targeted, especially any mosque which have a, a burial site in it will will be exposed to that. And this this Ahmed Basha mosque, the, the Ottoman one. The member where the, uh, the imam's uh, stands been dismantled or destroyed because it has more than three steps. Because during Muhammad, they said, uh, only have three steps. So this is warrants the destruction of that. And of course, the attack on Christian and Islamic graves is, uh, is quite obvious. Even on sort of... Uh, uh, <coughs> Icons for Libya. This is uh, uh, the uh, nymph, uh, the Gazala nymph in the middle of Tripoli. It is, uh, was there since 1927, and it's uh, quite offensive to some of the extremes. So they shot it with RBG first. And then I, I was there, and I went to photograph it, and then decided to go next day, and the next day it wasn't there. So it was an empty here. They have a, a uh, an Islamist group with, uh, uh, with the, their militia, they grabbed it and took it. We didn't know where it is at the moment. And of course, the urban encroachment is the biggest threat in Libya. This site is uh, near uh, uh, Cyrene, called, uh, uh, called uh, the old name is Artemis, and called Massa. It's been basically erased. This is the, the view from, uh, uh, from Google Maps. Uh, so this is the view from Google Maps before the destruction a year ago, and this is actually what happened. They, they erase it, and they build roads, and divide the land, and uh, sell it. Uh, this have one of the rarest uh, uh, 5th century BC tombs. Uh, uh, it have massive uh, uh, Byzantine churches. It is really a, a fantastic big, 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 big site, and it's not thoroughly recorded. And of course, the uh, Cyrene, the biggest site in, in Libya, Greek site, it wasn't really sort of uh, uh, exempt from that. And because it's uh, surrounded by tribes and a lot of tribal land, so 
and the department and they have arms and the department couldn't do much. You could see the the sanctuary of Demeter within the the, the classical side. They build chalets. They they haven't destroyed, the, but they will eye source. This is the new uh, civilization. The civilization of the breeze blocks taking over here. Uh, this is uh, during 2014. I went to do to have, to uh, to assessment of the damage there. And why we there? They bulldozed some of the uh, necropolis there, and, and the department came to clean up. And there, in the top where they are in the second picture, they're still building there. And of course, they building roads so they could divide the land. And this is the World Heritage Site. Uh, it is really, really uh, bad. And of course, vandalism. In, uh, in the desert area, it's not hugely reported. It's difficult to get to to see it. And it was um, uh, I went there uh, by chance and I found this. But uh, the reports we have, because inaccessible, there's little damage there apart from vandalists who use um, spray paint on top of uh, uh, prehistoric uh, rock painting. In the Bree Desert area, of course, people go around. They are digging for gold. This is the, the, the there's golds in these places. And I don't see there's damage and sort of try to sell, but uh, it's just pure superstitious ignorance, whatever you call it. And of course, some others not aware of the, what they're building in top. This is in Benghazi, building in really Hellenistic grave. And of course, there's the uh, vandalism just for the sake of it. This is in the, in the desert, they just vandalize. And this is during the Arab Spring, and that one during the Second World War, we used it for uh, pot shooting. So, so vandalism, <laughs> not uh, restricted to actually nowadays, but it's done in uh, previous times. OK. Uh, and of course, when we were there, we, we came on the biggest theft in the history of, of archaeology and the theft of the treasure of Benghazi. We actually one of the first people who came after the, the event. Uh, Karl Habsburg went down. This is the hole where they get the, from the central bank of Benghazi after being burned. 10,000 objects, a lot of it unrecorded, was deposited in the bank since 1961, and they disappear. And of course, trafficking as well. This is a head being sold in Christie, and it was the head of the <coughs> of, uh, of the, the mission, uh, Domitella, and uh, it was recorded. It was catalogued from Sabrata. Nevertheless, been sold by Christie. We challenged Christie. And this, obviously, the due diligence sort of process didn't work. Uh, we have a huge amount of trouble with them. They sold it to Italian seller. And thank God for the Carbonari. The Carbonari retrieved it. And uh, Italian uh, Prime Minister Mario Monti returned it back to Libya. And this is some of the Benghazi treasures. And of course, recently in the news here as well, uh, it is, uh, uh, <coughs> I think, going to be sent back to Libya. It's still in the British Museum. It's, uh, it's, um, it's a unique sort of kind of iconic uh, uh, bust from Cyrene. Only it could be found in Cyrene. And obviously, to try to relate it that the provenance is Turkey and so on and so forth. But as we've been caught in uh, by the uh, custom learning size here. And of course, Saparata as well has some head stolen, been, been recovered by the Libyans. And these are being caught by the Libyan police by chance. So really, uh, how does Libya protect its cultural heritage? Uh, they try to carry on risk assessment. It's very difficult. Documenting and digitization, they don't have the tools and, and, and needs help on that. But they do hide all the museum collection. 
they do have a security camera. They're trying to do guarding. They engage a lot of the local communities. Here, the, uh, the National Museum of uh, Tripoli it has one fantastic collection there. This is what is going, what's happening now. They're packing it up and storing it somewhere, which is quite the right thing. Of course, guarding the sites all depends on the community, and this is really the local communities protecting the sites. And uh, of course, the awareness is we're doing a huge amount of work on the awareness, so to make the people, local people, engaged, especially young, catch them young is the is the uh, uh, is the order of the day. And of course, there, there's uh, 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 awareness as well. What actually Libya wants? This is a letter from the Department of Antiquity recently. Uh, they Libya want help in formalizing strategy to protect heritage. They want uh, help in document and recording. Uh, they want help in uh, training programs. Uh, there's some training program done by UNESCO and other, some of the foreign missions, but not enough. <coughs> and they want the international uh, uh, communities to pressurize the Libyan government, hopefully one government soon, uh, <laughs> uh, to really put help and to make uh, protecting heritage uh, a priority because we, if we lose it, we lose it. And uh, we really want to engage, the, uh, to engage with the heritage community outside Libya. This is what the Libyans want. So Libya really needs your help. And the heritage in Libya is better than many other places. So, uh, so far, ISIS hasn't done much damage. And we don't know if you might be damaging it now, so we cannot really predict the future, but uh, that's it. Thank you very much.